During the past few days, Belarus has made international headlines and not in a positive way. This time it has everything to do with the arrest of this 26-year-old critical journalist, Raman Pratasevich. On Sunday, May 23rd, a Ryanair passenger airplane making its way from Athens to Vilnius received a warning from Belarusian air traffic control. An email containing a bomb threat came in. A fully armed Belarusian MiG-29 fighter aircraft joined the passenger plane mid-air, commanding them to take a detour and land in Minsk, Belarus's capital. This regarding the fact the plane was closer to its final destination, the pilots decided to follow instructions and make a precautionary landing. Once landed, upon the plane's inspection, no bomb was found. But Raman, together with his 23-year-old girlfriend Sofia Zapaga, were on board. Belarusian authorities arrested both of them. From the minute news reached Western governments, it became clear the bomb threat was a made-up ruse for Belarus to capture one of its most well-known critics. A few days later, it emerged the email was sent 24 minutes after the passenger plane was redirected. One day after his arrest, a video of Raman surfaced on social media. In it, he admits responsibility for the recent demonstrations in Belarus. The leader of the Belarusian opposition in exile, Svetlana Tishanovskaya, tweeted, this is what Raman looks like under physical and moral pressure. EU leaders were quick to condemn the hijacking. President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, noted the hijacking was utterly unacceptable. During an emergency meeting of EU leaders, within two and a half hours, they agreed to impose more sanctions on Belarus, among them forbidding Belarusian airplanes from landing on European airports and requesting European airlines to observe a no-fly zone above Belarus. But frankly, the country already was an outcast in Europe before this hijacking. At the center of the entire story stands one man. His name is Alexander Grigorievich Lukashenko. Many Western outlets have given him the dubious title of being Europe's last dictator. He has been ruling Belarus as president since July 1994, and one of the main reasons for him remaining in power that long has been the support of Russia. With a population of approximately 9.4 million landlocked between Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania and Latvia, Belarus is the odd duck in the European pond. It is the last authoritarian state on European soil. Freedom of the press isn't exactly high on its priority list. Journalists critical of the government are severely restricted in their work. It ranks 158th out of 180 on the Press Freedom Index of Reporters Without Borders. It wasn't that long ago when Lukashenko restricted its domestic media with a new set of regulations. Since then, journalists are forbidden from documenting mass events against the established order. He took these measures in response to the ongoing protests against the government in summer 2020. These protests erupted when Lukashenko emerged victorious in the much disputed election of August that year, allowing him to continue for a sixth term. Officially, Lukashenko received 80% of the votes, although these figures are highly disputed. His opposition candidate, Tishanovskaya, estimates she received between 60 and 70%. Following the election results, the vast majority of opposition figures fled the country. What followed were months of protests, all severely beaten down by Belarusian law enforcement. And the current sanctions announced by the European Union aren't the first ones either. In the wake of this August election and protest, they announced sanctions as well. Having survived months of protests last year, and once again accepting EU sanctions as a trade-off for capturing an opposition figurehead, it seems that Lukashenko will be able to continue down the same path as Europe's last dictator. 